morning guys uh, woke up this morning with just the perfect topic to discuss with you um, but it's not a good one not entirely at least um, you know every so often if you're anything like me we need a club upside the head to remind us why we're doing the things we're doing. You know, just a little something to remind us, hey, life is short. Or hey, all the optimism in the world doesn't change the fact that, yeah, the world is ugly. I had a little experience with, you know, both of that this week. You know, had a... Uh, really close family member died this uh, past week. It was difficult, um, particularly because they had just received a kidney transplant in order to help them make it through with their diabetic condition. And so prior to their death, they were very excited about the new potential and possibilities of their life. Now, without having to be bound to the hospital for dialysis, they were going to get out live their life, do things the way they did before they found themselves in the intense condition they are now. And, uh, yeah, they, instead of doing that, they were taken home. So that was pretty hard, you know, just reminds you that no matter how optimistic you are, no matter how great your intentions, no matter how positive minded you are, the circumstances are what the circumstances are and you will run right into them no matter what you do. Absolutely, it's important to keep faith but understand that there's a reason to keep faith. It's because if you don't then situations like that become crushing not just obstacles and difficulties that we overcome. So, those are your choices overcome your obstacles, you know, embrace your family, endure the hurt, be good to people, love on them when it's hard, or throw your building blocks, throw your faith, throw your relationship to the Father, throw all that out the window, and when something that hurts comes along, get crushed by it. Those are your options. So that was... Heck, man, that was my Wednesday. <laughs> it's just another day, right? But um, I did some uh, reading since then, and, you know, I don't think I really have that much of a positive video for you today. What I think I have is I have faith in practice is what I have to, show, to share with you today. I'm obviously, I've talked about this, you know, I'm obviously of an anarcho-Christian nature. I despise government. I despise the notion of some men believing that they are, you know, good enough creatures that they should be able to instruct and demand behavior from other men. That, to me, in its very essence, that's disgusting. That, that really offends my sensibilities, so that's why I have more of an anarchist background. I do not like the notion that some men feel entitled to instruct, demand, or govern other men. I think that's wrong. Least of all, a man, a man that should want to. Don't get me wrong, there are good leaders out there. But most great leaders have no interest in leading. That's been my experience. So, it kind of all overwhelmed me last night. I just... I saw a few new news articles roped in and tied together with some things I've seen over the past few years, and it, it kind of overwhelmed me last night. It really started to get in my head, turned me in a really negative way, and for a minute there, you know, I dropped the ball just like we all do, and I just got really burnt, really hurt about it, and today I think I'm going to talk about it because, you know, it's important that we remember that this isn't supposed to be easy. This isn't just, 
oh, you follow Christ or you follow God and therefore things work out and you just make the best out of every situation. That's, that's not what it is. This, this does take work. You know, living in a peaceful way, loving people, it takes work. You know, it's worth it, but it, it absolutely takes work. The overall cacophony, just the aggregate, not the aggregate, but the heaping on of government interference and just the way it is to live in America today. I, in my last video, I talked about, you know, we kind of made it. Is the situation as bad as we thought it was? It actually is. It's just that in order to get through the day, you have to stop paying attention. You have to. You cannot be an aware and informed citizen in this country. You can't, because if you do, it's painful. I talk to a lot of people who say, well, there's a lot of people I know who have gotten into this whole just repetitive stream of just posting this conspiracy after that conspiracy, Monsanto puts in this, and GMOs do that, and vaccines do that, and 9-11 was this, and this is what government does, and this is cops, and this is that, and this is that. And honestly, I used to be one of those people, but I figured out, damn it, nobody's listening. They're not. Even if 50% of what you're saying is right, and you're one of those folks who just constantly posts just like negative shit, yeah, you're probably right, but nobody cares. And do you want to know why? It's because if they cared, if they allowed themselves to see, they'd be as crazy as you are. And believe me, you look fucking crazy when you do that. I know. Because I used to do it. It hurts. I know why you're posting it. It's because this shit hurts and there's nothing else you can do. I read an article last night. A woman is being given a misdemeanor charge. Get this a misdemeanor charge because she has a small door on her building for her pet, which functions as an indoor pet and an outdoor pet. This house cat decided one sunny day to go out the cat door, plop itself down and take a restful laying down position in the middle of her front yard. Well shit, how America is that? My house cat is laying in the front yard, soaking up the sun, happy as can be, watching people go by. What could be more American than that? No. For that. For your cat laying in your front yard, this woman received a misdemeanor charge. She was ticketed. Received two tickets, in fact. I have no idea what for. I don't know the context. I didn't read the article. I read it enough to verify that it's actually on a... Uh, reputable news site. It's actually from a local news site. So, you know, when you go in and you actually like see like news on six Atlanta or news on six North Carolina, it's like, okay, well they're reporting it and it's local. That to me is typically enough for me to be like, oh shit, this actually happened. That's all I need. Right. If I know that it happened, I don't need the context. And let me tell you why, because I've seen enough. There's not enough context in the world to justify a woman receiving a freaking misdemeanor fine over her cat laying in the front yard. <laughs> There's not enough context in the world to justify that. Oh, what? The cat was doing coke off a small mirror in the front yard? What? Was it preaching, was it preaching Christianity to children in the front yard? Was the cat out there freaking building bombs? What? What was this fucking cat doing that this woman needed to receive a misdemeanor charge? And it comes back to it, man. Every time I see something like this, you know, a woman was shot while pregnant and the police are charging her with the murder of her child because <laughs> the child died in her womb. And so she's being charged with murder for that. A woman was in a jail cell, pregnant, was tasered while in a jail cell into a miscarriage. These are all just recent news. They're just things that have come up. Do I know the context? Fuck, do I even know where they happened? No, I don't need to, but I believe them. 
or rather I'm inclined to believe them. The reason behind that is, is because I have seen previously what our government does, what our police forces do, what our culture does. I've observed it. I've watched the trajectory that it's been on. I have examined closely enough of these articles to know that the likelihood of them being true is rather high. And so last night, on top of, you know, my family's departure with from a from a loved one, you know, somebody who I had some really great memories with growing up. Along with that, just look at social media for a minute. You know, people are probably going to get mad at me for this, but what almost dis- what almost disturbs me just as much is just what we're doing socially. The way that people behave when trying to promote transgenderism or cross-dressing because some of them are just trying to do drag queening with kids. That's under my skin a bit. The way people are going to public libraries, libraries, and going in front of children. I saw this video of a man dressed as a woman on all fours, arching his back, opening his mouth as wide as he can and doing what appears to be screaming or making faces in three different directions. So he's like, he's facing this way. Then he kind of steps around and now he's facing this way. And the whole time he's just like, ah, he's got his mouth all the way open and then like this. And then he does that. And this is some performance he's putting on for children at a library. Can you leave the fucking kids alone? Please? Can you just leave them the fuck alone? Look, I get it. You know, you've got to nurture them, raise them up and stuff. But on matters of sex, on matters of identity and who they are, on matters of things that actually are going to affect them for the rest of their lives, can you just leave them the fuck alone to figure that out for a little while? It's not up to us to influence that. Shut the fuck up. Stop that shit. I don't care how important your fucking gender studies nonsense is to you. I don't care how important it is to you that trans people be accepted. Look, I have at least a trans friend and I had a grandfather who was transgender, believe that. He's not with us anymore and he's not the one who died this last week, but I did have a a transgender grandfather, so that's enough of that. I ain't hearing it from you. But kids, you don't need to mess with their bodies for them. If they want to transition, that'll be a decision that they make on their time. If you're, if you are trying to convince your child to transition to an opposite gender at any age, less than, I don't know, ever, because at 18, it's their choice to make. And if you're doing that, you're, you're abusing a child, plain and simple. A child's body is a child's body, and if they have confusion over it, then they can come to you. And maybe you can help them then. But you don't need to be uh, transitioning five-year-olds. Instead, we're worried about these things, okay? So this is what culture has to offer us. And I'm seeing these photos of uh, blue-haired men with full beards and facial makeup. And all I see here is I see Jacob's Ladder. I don't know if any of you have seen that movie, but it's full of just psychological horror. You know... Everybody, they're trying, they've been trying and spending a lot of time trying to desensitize us to just the way they are. But to me, it's just this constant film going across the screen of just people doing disgusting things to people, broken people, breaking people over and over and over again across the screen constantly. And they're trying to desensitize us and get us to just accept it. And frankly, I'm not okay with that. You know? Every time I see another one of these, I see that guy in the back of the car on Jacob's Ladder. I think it was the first time in film they did it. Basically, what they had a guy do is they had him move his head back and forth like such, forward back, and then they sped up the tape so that, and you've seen it in a bunch of, you know, different horror films, but I'm pretty sure Jacob's Ladder was the first to do it, and it's just a sped up guy just moving his head around all erratically, and it's it's psychologically scary, right? It's one of, it's 
it's a horror feature. And every time I keep seeing more and more of this, it, it reminds me of the same thing. I've literally had nightmares growing up about cultures where everybody just kind of went glazed in the eyes and accepted whatever was put before them and offered up ideas that ideas and viewpoints that were horrendous and backwards. And again, to say, I'm not saying that you having an issue with your life and needing to transition genders because you feel like you were born in the, in the wrong body, I'm, that's not the horror here. You being homosexual and not being able to accept the plan God has for you. I understand. It's, that's not the horror here. The horror here is the constant berating, the social influence, the getting in front of people, the celebration of things that are not natural. I understand that you need to live this way and no, I'm not gonna judge you for that. I have no problem with that. But look, every sin is a sin. Every sin is a sin. We all hurt. We all have reasons that we're imperfect. But you don't see me trying to go into a library and convince children, you know, this is why you should be a better thief. I don't ask for parades to be thrown in my favor because once upon a time, I shoplifted a lot. A, we all have our problems. We all have our issues, but your constant influence and just the way that these people involve themselves and stick their noses into culture and the way that they try to influence children, it's terrifying. It is really horrifying. It's like, it's like, imagine watching the propaganda videos for Nazi youth in 1933 and just the way that they lied to the kids in order to get their points across and the picture perfect world that they were creating for them through the propaganda and the videos and the stuff they were talking about to children back then. If you can think about that and you can see how ugly that was and, and just imagine the horror there, that's what I'm seeing here. And no, you guys aren't Nazis. You're worse. Okay? So fucking stop. Anyways. So we've got a government that has proven to us without exception that we are not free. We have got a culture that constantly tells us and tells our children to accept things that need to be best kept to oneself. And throughout it, we have the call. Uh, this is the faith in action, right? We have the call that reminds us. It's funny because in the middle of this, I've been overwhelmed. I've been reminded with a club upside the head why I'm doing these videos, why I'm speaking out in the first place because yes, this world really is sick. You know, I try to allow myself to believe as I've discussed with you that, you know, maybe things aren't really that bad. Maybe I'm being overreactionary. And it's, it's a reasonable way to think because I've posited the idea many times that our government deliberately feeds us. Uh, I'm sorry, and not just our government. You know, there's a lot of factors at play here. There's a lot of different acting parties, but I do believe that we're being fed a lot of fear. And the purpose of that is to deliberately keep us separated from each other. It's to deliberately keep us in a state of panic as opposed to in a state of union and in a state of correcting these things that they've broken. And I do still believe that. So I have to, I have to take all this with a grain of salt and I have to be careful how I do it. But man, if you ever open your eyes for long enough, it's enough, it's enough. If, if that's what they're doing, it works well. All you gotta do is open your eyes and pay attention to it and wade into that pool for long enough and you'll figure it out. But I, I saw a really relevant Facebook post that, I, that stuck with me and uh, it was from Rival Nations and I really like their stuff because they really challenged me. And I'm gonna throw it up on the screen here, but I do not actually have it memorized, so I'm just gonna to have to more or less go based off of what I remember. And it's that if you believe that the world is just getting worse and worse, and all that evidence around you is just getting you low, you're forgetting that Christ has conquered over evil. Your faith is forgetting that, and it's true. I've said before, and I'll say it again, the, the Bible is the source of my truth. 
you know? I have to have faith. I have to believe. Even in the face of all this, even in the face of absolute oppression, in the face of a broken uh, society, in the face of all that, I still have to believe that Christ is winning. It, well, it's easier than that, really. It really is easier than that. It's not quite that I know he's won. It's more a matter of, I can feel it. I think the way this works is, it comes in when you remember, it comes into play when you remember who you are. Okay. Shout out to Ted Decker. Love you, bro. You did some really great work. There is you. Who are you? When someone asks me who I am, I am the son of the father, adopted in to the family via the blood of Jesus Christ. That's who I am. That is what will identify me, okay? That is, to me, all that matters. Or most of the time, it's all that matters. There's this process we go through. And it's a lot like forgetting and remembering. And it's a very painful process when you've forgotten. So that person, who I am, son of the father, inheritance to the love of God, okay? That's who I get to be. That's what's been promised to me. I get to be a son to the father. Now, that means that the father who is beyond concern, right? There's a lot of theology here, but basically it boils down to this. The Father is so omnipotent, so omnipresent, that even just a little wrong, even a whole lot of wrong, is separate from Him. He can't contain it. He doesn't contain it. It's not part of Him. It may perchance grieve Him, but it does not influence, move, shake, or change Him. As such, I am to follow in his footsteps and act, you know, act in a way that is similar. The person I am, the person I will continue to be when I die, the son of the father, you know, that person that that person doesn't have time for those sorts of those sorts of issues either. Therefore, it is both impractical and inaccurate for me to take on these burdens and to allow them to change or flex or influence me. I must stay true to who I am, and that's what faith is. It's remembering who you are and remembering who the Father has made you to be. That's what faith really comes down to. This is a really, really rough explanation. And it turns out it's been a long time since I've examined it. I'll certainly need to revisit it. But the long and short is, the Father is not moved, influenced, or changed by sin and corruption. Neither then shall we be. We must stay the course. We must remember who we are in here. Because the things of this world will affect this guy. This, this guy, right? this. They'll affect those. And if we allow the world and the flesh to identify us, then yeah, they'll affect us too. Our hearts. We're, we're strictly instructed to follow the Spirit, not the flesh. As such, when we follow the Spirit, we stay true to who we are. Son to the Father. Not injured, not hurt, not lessened, not weakened, and not changed by the nastiness of the world, by the stuff. So that's who, who we have to be. Rather, we have to remember that's who we are. So, when Christ says that he has defeated, that he is victorious over evil, when Christ says that he is victorious over evil, that's what he means. 
we have already won. And no, there's no amount of political upheaval. There's no amount of damage. They can't come into your house and beat it out of you. They can't change who you are. That's in, that's, that's in here. That's in your heart. This is a little deeper than I typically go in these things, I guess. But who you are is yours. You know, being a Christian, following God, doing the things that Christ asks, it's not easy. You know, anyone who, who thinks it is easy, uh, I've got news for you. It, it does take some work. And for that work, compensate yourself by refusing to just simply give up those things for which you've worked. Don't allow the world or the people in it to take that from you. Defend it. It's worth it. So, in closing, the world's gotten ugly again. It never stopped. I just opened my eyes and paid attention for a little bit more. But it doesn't influence me. Even if it's my house, they, even if it's my door they kick down tonight. Even if it's my wife they tase. Even if it's my pets they shoot. Even if it's me they put in prison. If I remember who I am, which isn't always easy. If I remember who I am, then these people who lust for blood who are not of the Father, but are of the enemy, if these people who wish to destroy everything good in this world, because that's, that's what they wish to do, I'm tired of not acknowledging motives. And I've done it for long enough, you know? Well, you know, if we don't, if we don't try to interpret their motives, then maybe we can just be good to them. No, you know, at, after a certain point, some people kind of prove their motives after a certain point. Now, don't get me wrong, you're free to change my mind again. Because again, I don't want to be separated from you. I want unity. I don't want division. But you know something? These people have demonstrated time and time again that all they are really interested in is destruction. They just want to hurt. They just want to hurt me. That's, I'm convinced. And that anytime someone's, anytime someone's welcome to change my mind, anyone's welcome to show me otherwise, but until then, I don't really believe it. So, these people, when it's my turn, because of faith, because of who Christ is, because of what he did, and because of who I get to be through him, they can't hurt me. They can't take a single thing from me because I've given it all over to God. I don't own any of these things. I don't even own my freedom. I don't own the notion of my freedom. I don't own any of it. So because of that, they have nothing to take in the first place. I just have to remember. At the end of it all, guys, it's what faith is about. To see how bad it really is and to acknowledge it. That's the hard part. That's the part even I'm not. I mean, I don't claim to be great at all this yet. I'm trying, though, I promise. But that's the hard part. Because you, there's an easy way to do this and to stay positive, and there's a hard way. The easy way is just go back to sleep and ignore it. Pre just You don't pretend it isn't there, but you just you go to sleep. Just turn away. Let's ignore it. Let's just not think about it. That's what I spend a lot of time doing. Then there's maintaining faith while confronting it and having both eyes open looking at the looking at the issue. That one's a lot harder. That one takes work. That's the one that we need to do. And it's if you haven't been doing that, each time you open your eyes to refocus and see the world again, it's very jarring. And that's what I find myself having done this week. So I don't know. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope this video is something that will get you through your hard times. Something that'll help. A little salve for the burn. I don't know. 
but the way the world is, it's already defeated. Christ already fought and won this battle. There is no government, there is no dominion on earth over which he is not king. So through that, we simply have to remember. We have to remember. Because when the lesson is taught, I don't have the necessary resources to teach that lesson. That's a lesson that takes time. That's, I call that the second rung. That's real faith and it comes with time. I've had it, sparks of it, for like quick minutes here and there. It's a very difficult thing to hold on to. It's a slippery, greased up rung on a ladder. It's real easy to just da -da, fall back down to a more comfortable position and a more comfortable relationship with Christ. It's much easier to do that. Real faith, the one where you look off in the distance and you see that mountain and you grin and you smile, but you don't dare ask it to move because you're afraid that if you did, God would hear you and it would actually move it and you would have to witness that in person. That, 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 that's, that's a different thing. That's, that's an intense, in-your-face kind of faith. I've had a few times. But through those experiences, I've learned that I am not who this world says I am. I am not limited by what they can do to me. I'm not limited by their rules. I'm a son of the Father. And that is why I will continue to say there is no king but Christ. I just wish y'all would stop hurting people.